pleasant good night look <laughs> amen beloved i'm going to open whether you are seeing it above the script here or at the side of your computer i'm going to open this script here for you with revelation for those of you who never saw it never heard about it can't interpret it don't have the revelation i don't want to spend more than 30 minutes with you now i have been reading the bible for the past 26 years the song of songs this particular book in the bible just some little introductory the song of songs also called originally the songs or song of solomon who is who was king solomon um this particular book in the bible people like to call it people like to call it it's not my best description people like to call it the mills and boons of the bible okay so this particular book in the bible written by Beirut from solomon's heart most of it expressing sexual content between a man and a wife it expresses very deep literature coming from a man on what he thinks about his wife or his woman so you might want to get with this right so this particular script here i'm going to give you the interpretation and, and um dig out bring out some revelation i'm just giving for the people who may not know anything at all i'm giving some introduction and um, you need to read this book on your own time. The book in the Bible, it's a book within the book of the Bible called the Song of Songs, meaning it's a song of many songs. And it was, it, the, the words from it, even if it wasn't exactly Solomon who put it down, I can't recall at this moment, whoever would have been his editor or whoever would have known all his business by detail, this is the habit of Solomon, how he speak about his wife, his woman. And there is a lot of even sexual content in this book. Now, I'm going to read this particular script here from two versions, which would be um, real ancient original King James version. And then I'm going to read... The same verse from the NIV, which is a much more modern day, proper English, sim more simple version. Now, for those of you who are not aware, listen good. The King James Version, I usually tell people, which it is true. The language and the comprehension put together in the King James Version, the wordings and the use, usage of words and the comprehension is very corrupted. It's not understandable for for this modern for this modern world, okay? So the King James version has prehistoric speech, not proper speech. So that's why, to satisfy the sum, I'm going to read it from the King James version, and then to capture the understanding of everyone, I'm going to read from the simpler version. Now this is what. Solomon said about his bride, his wife. He said this, reading from Song of Solomon, Songs of Solomon, Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, chapters 4 and verse 9. What does this mean? I'm here to explain that to you tonight. What does this mean? He said, Solomon said, Thou, he's speaking to the woman, I'm going to read the symbol of version after, Thou hast ravished my heart. But here's what he said. He said, my sister. He called her my sister. He said, thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes. He said, well, I'll, I'll read a simpler version for you just now. With one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. Okay, so that was the King James version that is to please those old King James lovers. Now I'm going to, Facebook is presently showing me on my live video that only one person is watching. I don't believe that. 
Facebook is showing me that only one person is watching. I don't believe that. Okay, I'm just here with you for half an hour or less. And let's read the simpler version of this verse. Now, I am here tonight to open your eyes to show you what does Solomon means when he called his lover his sister. Come on now. Because most men would say, oh, I don't understand that. I can relate to that. So I'm going to open that for you tonight. So let's look at this, the more proper English version. So I'm reading from Song of Songs, Book of Song of Songs in the Bible, known as the um, book, the lover's book. Some people call it the mills and boons of the Bible. I don't prefer to use that, but that's just to help others to know what's going on. And the content and the literature in there has, it has sexual content. So I would like to encourage everybody to get to reading the book of Song of Songs because I'll tell you why. I want to tell you this also as it comes to my mind and heart. Song of Songs can be taken in a threefold manner. Okay? The love between a man and a woman. The love between Jesus, the husbandman, to the bride, his church, follow, number two. And the love between the father and you. Let me say that again. So the book of Song of Songs, why I believe God was was sure to establish this lover's lean and romantic content and sexual content in the Bible. Why it was so sure and notice he used King Solomon to do it because he really blessed King Solomon on top. They said, the scripture said no one had knowledge uh, like Solomon. No one had wisdom. No one before and after had the wisdom and knowledge of Solomon. He was, he was the best with words. Now listen, look at this again. What is the status quo position? What is the purpose, motive, and reason that God has established the book of song? I tell you, listen, you will see. Sometimes you need a preacher, somebody anointed to let you know. Certain things in the Bible that you would have bypassed that you would never see the importance of. The reason God would have established this particular book in the Bible, threefold. Number one, the love between a man and a woman, how it's supposed to be God's way, the origination. Number two, to show you the love between Jesus, the husbandman, and his bride, the church. Anyone who is washed under the blood of Jesus, anyone who is a believer, you are the church. And the third, third fold, third reason, it is to show you in detail exactly how Almighty God, Father God, feels about his creation, about his children. Now, so let's read the simpler version. So again, Song of Songs, chapters 4 and verses 9. So Solomon says to the woman that he loves his bride, he said, you have stolen my heart. I'm going to explain that to you. My sister, what does he mean? My sister, my bride, how could you call your woman, your bride? How could you call your wife, your sister, sorry. How could you call your woman, your sister? We all know what sister means. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to tell you that in two minutes. How could you call the woman that you make love to love with your sister? How could you call your married wife your sister? What's this thing? What, how, how could you call your wife to be this person you're so attracted to? In every way, <laughs> mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, and you are calling her your sister. What does that mean? Yeah, so he said, you have stolen my heart, my sister, my bride. You have stolen, and he said it in the same note, in the same sentence. He put it together. I'm going to open that for you. With one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. Okay, let's stop right there. So when he would have said, however just to move this off the surface, when he would have said, with one glance of your eyes, what Solomon meant, what the man meant is, I am so 
captured under you by your love. You are drawing me to such an extent that when you appear, when I see you, when you see me, I just have to get one look at your eyes and I'm totally captivated. Now look at this. One, remember the King James Version said ravished. Let me give you an upfront what ravish means in particular this area. So the literary meaning of ravish means fill someone with intense delight. So not the other meanings of ravish because remember one word gives you several meanings, right? So when he said you have ravished my heart in the King James Version, you have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride. Solomon meant the literary meaning of ravish in this instance would mean to fill someone with intense delight. So when Solomon met his bride, this woman, he was immediately ravished by her, by her very appearance, by her very presence. And what does that mean? He had intense and de delight. Delight means like pleasure, pleasing and pleasure. This is all I want. This is all I want to hear about. This is all I want to see. This is all I want to know. And that's what delight means. Just like the scripture tells us, delight yourself in the Lord. You know that scripture, right? It tells you, delight yourself in the Lord. Be all up in him. Th that's what delight means. Be all up in him and he will grant you the desires of your heart. So here it is, Solomon saw his bride, his, his wife, even from the beginning. And he was with intense, he was ravished. He was with, with an intense, now intensity means it was coming heavy and strong. That's what that intensity means. Intense means heavy and strong and intense delight. So I was all up in you, heavy and strong from the moment I laid eyes on you. Yeah? So I'm just hitting off some surfaces there, but I want to get down to sister in a short while. So you have, so that word stolen because we saw the, the um, simpler version give us change ravished into stolen. Stolen means in this instance, my heart does not belong to me again well, from the moment I met you. You steal it, girl. <laughs> so what Solomon, what the scripture would have said by, what could it possibly mean that she has stolen his heart. You know, how could you steal, put your hand into the chest and rip off the heart, but not uh, literary, literally or figuratively. It was a spiritual thing. It was a spiritual thing. It was love. And so, stolen my heart, what the man meant about the woman is that my heart does not belong to me again from the moment I see you, girl. <laughs> from the minute in life, that instant, that particular God blessed day, that divine appointed moment, that instant in my life as a man, from the minute I saw you, my heart left my chest and came into the palm of your hands. You could do what you want with it. Girl, you have stolen my heart. <laughs> so are you all getting the picture there? What that stolen my heart means? So he meant, look, I have no control over my heart anymore. <laughs> I, as a man, I have no control over my heart anymore. That is what Solomon, Solomon meant here. He said, from the moment you came into my life, you took my heart out of my chest and look, you have it in your hand. You, it doesn't belong to me anymore. You have stolen my heart. My whole entire heart is for you. I am completely captivated. And let's look at that because we would have also seen the word, um, saw the word captive. And captive, now we're not talking about violence, now we're talking about love, love, right? And romance. So, captive, you have captured my heart. Captive means take into one's possession. So, again, the man is describing Solomon, King Solomon. He is describing what has happened to him with deep words, deep expressions of love. He said, look, he said, I am held captive by you, girl. <laughs> so, I am your prisoner because from the moment I laid eyes on you, from that 
special day, that divine encounter, that day of destiny, that destiny day, that destiny day, from the moment I saw you, I knew it had to be you. Amen. Yeah. So listen. Solomon's eyes was clean and clear. He had the full usage of his eyes. To be enabled and to have the ability to see one woman and get so captured. What do I mean? I want to address something and I don't want to stress too long in this part. What do I mean by that? Solomon the man. His eyes was clean and clear. Hear this. And because his eyes was not filled with solids or dust and he was not seeing blurry or something wasn't wrong. He was able, made enabled and well able to see one woman. What's the point here, Paula? Yeah. So I just want to address this for a while though before we get into the sister part. What, why would Solomon call his lover his sister? Hold up. I want to deal with the, the man's eye, your eyesight. We live in a generation where the eyes of man, listen to me good, and all those of you who will be looking at this video days from now, or in a short while from now, where the eyes of man are completely blinded, blurred, and full of dust and parasites and what have you, with lust and perversion, sexual perversion. I'll give you a short explanation on, on exactly what sexual perversion means. Lust, sexual per perversion, and the eyes of man, of men today, it's sad to say, but it's a majority all over, is fully occupied, preoccupied or fully occupied with pornography. And brother, listen to me very good, stranger. This is the reason, one of the main reasons why the world is so corrupted, why marriages are breaking up and ending daily. And I'm telling you this, you might say, well, my marriage didn't break up for that, but you wouldn't believe it. It's a gate opener. You see, watching pornography, it is a gate opener to cause any and everything else to go bad in your marriage and crash the marriage. And you wouldn't even realize it is because of your accountability of your private black life of watching pornography. So listen, Solomon had a clear eyesight. He could have seen his lifetime, long time woman. You see? And his eyes was able to be captured by her, his eyes, what, what did he say? He said, you have stolen. He said, with one glance of your eyes, when you look at me, he said, this is how I got, got stolen. He said, with one glance of your eyes, you see? But his eyes didn't have cataract. Hear me go out good. I'm speaking to the men at this point in particular. His eyes wasn't full with cat cataract or glaucoma or blood or with dust. Or, or, or blind, his eyes was not preoccupied with pornography and sexual, that spirit of sexual perversion. Now let's, let me give you the meaning of the bat of sexual perversion. Sexual, referring to sex, perversion, so I can give you the meaning, so, so sexual means sex. That word perversion, what does it mean? To pervert something, anything at all. The word perversion means to twist or distort or confuse the origination of something. Hear me? Hear me. To pervert the usage of something. I'll give you a practical example. Talking about a toothbrush. Using a toothbrush, 
right? So to pervert, pervert means to twist, distort, make um, distortion, you can't see, distort, uh, or to, to um, what is that word? Twist, distort, and the misuse of the origination of something. So let's say we all know what toothbrush is designed to brush my teeth. That's the original intent. Hear me good? The original intent and motive of the toothbrush, it was invented and designed for what? To brush your teeth. So here it is now, I'm going to take a used toothbrush and I'm going to dip it in shoe dye and I'm going to polish my shoe using a toothbrush. I have just perverted the usage of the toothbrush. Hold up now, I'm talking about sexual perversion. So, saying that I say this, I'll repeat it for those of you who don't understand. When you take sex, your sexuality and the act of sex out of God's <laughs> original intention and motive, God created sex. He had an original usage for it and intention and motive. It was designed, sex, to be used only in holy matrimony, in marriage, which would have meant and referred to the usage of one man. These days they had to mention these things, you know. One man and one woman. You had to reteach the world because they outlearn origination and they're doing what they want. So I have to emphasize to reteach people what they out what they outlearn, right? So are you all understanding? Let me, let me just repeat that. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. So sexual perversion means taking the origination of the intention of original sex, meaning what sex was created by God and designed for. It was designed for the usage of holy matrimony. One man, one woman. You have to emphasize these things these days, you know. People kind of funny wrong here. Yeah. So one man, one woman. So the origination, the originality and the original use of the creation of sex was to be enclosed and was exclusive to do, perform the act and do the usage of sex only under the condition of marriage, holy matrimony, one man, one woman. So what we see in the world today, people watching sex in videotape with 10 and 15 people engaging, that is what they call sexual perversion. So what the world has done, what people is doing, is taking the original intended use of sex and they have now what? Perverted the usage of it by using it anyhow, all how, with whoever, whenever, however, you know? So that is what sexual perversion means. Taking the original holy intent and usage of sex and perverting it into whatever course you want to take. How much woman, how much man, how man to man, woman to woman, 15 and 10 of them in one video. So that is what sexual perversion means. And this is where, this, this is pornography. Now, people living out sexual uh, perversion in the world, right? So again, I'm just going to make a quick repeat on this for those of you who just jump on. Sexual perversion, what does it mean? So we're talking about sex and we're talking about it perverted. How is it perverted, Paula? Because you take the original intended usage of sex, right? What God originally created it for and gave it to humankind for. So he built in the sexual organs in the body. He's the one who ordained sex. He's the one who created it. But God's intention was for sex to be exclusively between one man and one woman in marriage, in holy matrimony. But all you take this thing now and doing it one man, one ten woman, they want to do it outside marriage, nobody want to marry again, people um, don't respect marriage again, so that is what they call sexual perversion. Taking the origination of something and distorting it, twisting it and using it in a perverted manner, not how it was originally intended, 
but you twisting and distorting and using it to your own willful means and ends and evil gains. Okay, so here it is. The toothbrush was invented originally. A toothbrush was invented by whoever originally to do what? To help me brush my teeth and get my teeth clean. Right? So the toothbrush, the, the motive behind making a toothbrush was for you to brush your teeth clean. Correct? Okay? Just like the motive behind God creating sex was to be used and act out exclusively between one married man and a married man and married woman. Follow me with the toothbrush and the sex now. So here it is now. I go on and I take the toothbrush. And I take the toothbrush and I dip it in shoe dye. And I decided to dye my shoe. I have just perverted the, the original intent usage of the toothbrush. So you go now, behind your wife back, behind your husband back, and you went and had sex with somebody outside. You have just perverted the original usage of sex, intended by God, to be between you and your husband or wife alone. That is what is sexual perversion. Taking the origination of something, taking the origination of the sex, and doing what you want with it. Are you understanding? Is somebody understand me? Could somebody comment and say you understand what sexual perversion means? Right? So let's go back to the man and his eye again. Solomon had eyes. Two eyes. He didn't have glasses in them days. <laughs> Neither magnifying glass. And Solomon had no problem at all. Eh? He could have identified the woman for him. He said, you have stolen my heart. He said, girl, from the minute I clash eye on you, I can't think. You, you take my heart out of my chest and you have it in your hand, girl. This is the effect you have on me. So, but Solomon, his eyes was clean and clear and he could have seen. Listen, to, listen. And so he didn't have cataract or glaucoma. What is blocking the man of today or the men of today? What is causing marriages to decline? What is causing the world to refuse to find that one person to marry? Your eyes are full of dust, glaucoma, and cataract. You're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing blurred vision because, because sexual perversion has capped your eyes since from elementary school primary school you on pornography follow me follow me with this one so i hope that helped you out a lot now what does the man mean when he called the woman he's sleeping with <laughs> what will a man could possibly mean when he called his lover the woman he have sex with you are my sister. Mm. Here it is. Do you have a sister? <laughs> Go back to when you were small. What do you do with your sister? How, how do you relate to your sister? Hear me now. Hear me out. You love your sister. Now we're not talking about the corruption of families today and how people run cold on one another. Families break up, people fight, everyone. We're talking about how it used to be, but let me, but I'm drawing a pit here. Family, our siblings, your brother and sister. Let's talk, we're talking about a man, a, a, a brother and a sister. You used to play dolly house with your sister, Paula. What does that mean? You had a child like, listen to my words, you had a child like innocent love for your sister not so brother that is the kind of love you're supposed to have for your sister your wife ouch ouch my sister my bride your love for your wife supposed to remain and maintain like innocent love little boys and little little girls they do your bro brother and sister they don't separate picture this they hold hands together your sister, you played dolly horse with her when you were small. You, you went to protect her and cover her when she fell and burst her knee and she was crying. Okay? You respected your sister. You have to respect your wife. Follow? Here yeah, now. Now, I'm, why I'm talking to the man is because, remember, here is a man, the man Solomon, expressing in detail 
he called his wife his sister so i'm just opening that for you why would a man call the woman that he having sex with his sister so th this is it so i'm trying to show you brother and sister from small how it relates to wife and husband you love your sister with an inseparable love that is your sister you would even if you all fight and quarrel you and your sister you will still make her back with her <laughs> because she's your sister so family not separating because you love your sister so that love so when your sister and you would fight when you're small mommy mommy and daddy come to correct you all both of you all get licks or whatever your you and your sister would fight today as toddlers when you were small and you would make her back today are you following so your sister your bride if you have a disagreement conflict innocent love would afford you to to have that disagreement now and make her back before the day is over solomon called the woman he was sleeping with my sister my bride i'm hoping you're learning something already you protect your sister you protect your wife okay you 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 scramble with your sister when you were small and then you hug up your sister you scramble with her in the morning you hug her up in the evening because she's your sister sisters and brothers inseparable inseparable you are supposed to be so with your wife my sister my bride you respected your sister and you would have done anything to protect her from the neighborhood boys who would want to pelt her with stone and pebble and tease her and mock her you protected your sister when you were small you are supposed to protect your wife at all cost is anybody is somebody learning something did somebody get something you 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 adored and loved your sister for life. That is your flesh and blood, your sister. For life. Siblings, family blood. That is the same mannerism and behavior you are supposed to have with your wife. Okay, you honored your sister. You respected her, right? That is the same honor and respect you're supposed to have with your wife. That is what Solomon meant he, when he called the woman that he's sleeping with, having sex with, my sister, my bride. What Solomon, Solomon had a revelation on and what he was saying is this. You are my sister, like a sister to me in the same note. And you are my lover, the woman that I sleep with in the same exact note. Is some body understand what I'm saying you are my lover the woman that I make love to or make love with and at the same time I consider you my sister I have an eternal love for you hello if you can get this revelation as a man you will not look at your wife the same way again because brothers and sisters remain family for how long forever Brothers and sisters, blood relative relative. We could fight, disagree how much we want. Listen, there is no way I could erase this bloodline. We remain family forever. Legally, naturally, and also legally in the spirit realm, it cannot be changed. Amen. So brother, I am telling you, that the day or the minute or the second, I hope this little exhortation of the word could help you, that you can get a revelation on how Solomon described it. My sister, my bride. That is the day you would understand that there is no division and no separation between you and your sister. Amen. So he said again, you have stolen my heart, my sister, my bride. You have stolen my heart with one glance of your eyes. With one. And so that's the thing. Number one, we saw clearly where Solomon did not only have the enablement to make love to this woman, but Solomon had the revelation that this woman is his sister. Meaning the love that I have for you is so respect, with so much respect, 
that I cannot create a separation or division. I am tied and bound to you for the rest of my life. You are my sister. Are you understanding now? Okay. Then we saw clearly where Solomon described, he said, look, you stole my heart, you know, you, you ravished, you captured my heart. So what we saw what, what he meant by that. He said, as I explained to you what he meant, he said, from the day I first laid eyes on you, from the first minute, second, destiny, moment, divine moment in life that you and I both met, my heart was literal, actually taken, What this is what he meant, right? That my heart was taken out of my chest and it was placed straight in your hands. That is how much you have me. You have my attention. So this is what Solomon was saying about the woman that he loved you. That's what he meant by stolen my heart. We also saw clearly, he said, um, you only just had to glimpse, glance once with your eyes meeting my eyes and that was it. I was, he said, this is how you stole my heart with one glance of your eyes. And what I was t teaching you and telling you is Solomon had clean, clear eyes. You see, he, he had the ability to see clear on who is actually the one because his eyes were, was not um, <clears throat> sick with perversion. And I believe one of the biggest problems when it comes to healthy sexuality, having control over your sexuality and keeping marriages together, and love together between one man and one woman. One of the biggest problems that face the world, and it is the reason why, is because of the entry of sexual perversion, which is the usage, the wrongful usage of your sexuality, which is also leveled together with the, um, with the, with the usage and men, and why I'm talking to the men is they are mostly um, a prisoner of this, the usage of pornography. Yeah. So what, just a little touch on pornography, do I? Yeah, I mean, I could use some raw languages so you don't understand, but maybe it shouldn't be. But what happened when you have watched pornography long enough? I'm talking to the men for because we, we know very well it's a majority. You see, God put you as a head for a reason. So if I could help the head figure out their head and put back their head on top where it's supposed to be, well, then everything else will govern properly, you know? You see? So, um, yeah. So when you have, um, when you have practice, all your life watching pornography you may not admit it or you may not confess it or know it but this is what will this is what happens to you pornography eventually after a short space of time teaches teaches you the man in your brain to view all women as like i didn't want to say but i'll say it like a bitch who for prostitution so it when you view your sister as a who or a prostitute this is why there is no room for love for innocent childlike love so what pornography watching pornographic material does to the man which it does to which it has done has done okay let me give you a percentage and a ratio let's proceed out of a hundred percent, seventy percent worldwide men watch pornography. So, so I'm just trying to draw a picture just by using a percentage, right? Okay. So we say, well, Paul, don't leave all the women, don't leave. Okay. So I'm looking at hear me good, you know, whether you disagree or you want to argue. So in the world today, about forty percent out of a hundred percent of women watch pornography. But hear me out, good. 70% out of 100% men have been feeding themselves pornography 20 years now, 15 years now, 30 years now. So I'll tell you something. This is why we can't keep marriage together. This is why there is so much. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yeah, because your brain 
has already been transformed so much. You are programmed the, the originality of innocency, of love for your sister with innocent, pure love. Hear me now? Hear me now? I'm preaching good now. Listen. Uh, it has flushed out pornography, has bleached your brain, get the origination of sex out, the truth of sex. And you know, no, you wouldn't tell me that with your mouth, you know. But from the moment you see a woman, even a preacher, the first thought coming to your mind and heart, look a prostitute to sleep with. He wouldn't say it for the amount, you know, but you believe you're looking at a bitch who. You see, that is what, hear me out ladies, hear me out men, this is what pornography does to men. And they could argue how much they want and say, oh, you saying that, uh, no, um, that is not true. Oh, no, oh, no. But let me tell you something. You don't have to confess it with your mouth. I am telling you and teaching you what pornographic material does to men. It eventually trains, it reprograms their brain and it eventually trains the man to believe when I see a woman, I see sex. I see a sex object. She is sex material. She is a prostitute. And I want to do with her what I see in the pornography. So I view her as one of them, like a bitch who or something like that, you see? So this is what, this is why most people will not understand, but I explain to you what Solomon meant when he called his bride, his wife, the woman that he sleep with, my sister. You see? So the reason why you can't comprehend why would Solomon call the woman that he's sleeping with my sister is because you have far gone from that when it comes to how you view a woman. You see? So beloved, be blessed. We, I'll do more of this. Um, I will do more of this kind of topic. So be blessed. P possibly share this with someone. And um, bye for now. You can listen to the video from the top.